7. We'll pick up in verse 1. The title today is, Doesn't Anybody Believe in Jesus? And the first section is about, in, in this passage, and we'll, we'll do two, two weeks in John 7. And the first section is uh, emphasis on what the people actually believed about Jesus in this, at this event, this encounter. John 7, 1 through 31. And we'll emphasize that. And of course, the key verse we looked at in the children's message. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. John 7, verse 37 and 38. That'll be for both weeks, that verse. So look at what they believed first. What did they believe exactly? There's uh, different groups of people in this text here. We'll look at the, the Jews. We'll look at the brothers of Jesus. The world in general, the crowds. And of course some of these overlap. And then the people of Jerusalem themselves and how they, what exactly did they believe and how were they responding and reacting to the ministry of Jesus and the person of Jesus. And so I think that's the key here. So we'll, we'll look... Uh, at the Jews first, so we'll look at different verses in this passage. Verse 1 says, After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. So even this early in his ministry, the attitude of the, the Jews, the fellow Jews, especially the religious leaders, it was that they sought to kill Jesus, even as he was beginning his ministry. If you go down to verse uh, 11 in the text, the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? Where is he? So they're looking for him here again. They're seeking to kill him. They want to find him publicly, accuse him of something publicly, and then have the Lord Jesus uh, killed, arrested, tortured, and eventually uh, killed. Of course, we know why uh, he was to die. But in the story, look at verse 13. No, the people were afraid to speak openly of him because they were afraid of the Jews. Why? Because of the Jews' intent to kill the Lord Jesus. That's why. They, they were even afraid to talk about their different views about Jesus. There were many different views. And so because of that, uh, even publicly, the people were afraid too. Because they the intent of the Jewish people or the Jewish leaders was to find Jesus and to have him killed. So they had instilled fear in others as a result. Now in verse 20, we see something interesting here. Because of the response of the people, and I'm sure that it's motivated by uh, the, the Jewish beliefs. In verse 20 of John 7, the people answered and said, You have a demon who is seeking to kill you. So Jesus knew that they were seeking to kill him. Well, they, were, they turned that against him and said, you have a demon. This is not the only time in Scripture that Jesus was accused of having an evil spirit. And so they were uh, trying to discredit his, his um, reputation as much as possible in order to accuse him and have him arrested. So what exactly did they believe? Well... In this passage, they obviously had strong feelings toward Jesus, enough to want to kill him and uh, have him arrested and killed publicly. What about his brothers? And I, this is always interesting to me. We go to verse 2 down to verse 5 in the text. She, the, now the Jews' feast of the tabernacles was at hand. So it's a big religious festival. All the Jewish males had to go to Jerusalem annually for the Feast of the Tabernacle. His brothers said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea. So leave Galilee, go down to Judea, that your disciples may see the works that you are doing. No one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world 
And then John explains why they said this to him. Even his brothers did not believe in him. So those that were the closest to him did not believe in him yet. It was actually after the resurrection that they believed, that they believed in him. So his brothers, what were their feelings and views? So the, the, Jewish, the general Jewish feeling was anger toward him. Rejection of him. That's the general Jewish feeling. All the way back to John chapter 1 when we started the study. He came unto his own, his own received him not. So that uh, John 1 11, and goes, we go all the way back. Now, what about his brother's feeling? The feeling at home, because these are the ones that were the closest to him. They had been raised with him, they had learned with him, they had studied under their father, I'm sure, with him as far as work to do in life. And now his ministry has begun. What was their feeling? They doubted his sincerity. Um, and I think we see that here. That go from here, go to Judea. So his brothers are telling him to go on to Judea. Are they planning to go with him to announce his ministry and who he is? No, they're not. Because the scripture says clearly they did not believe in him at that point. And also they were pushing him. There's a little sarcasm here. Uh, no one that does anything in secret why himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. So there's some sarcasm here. And so they're pressing, pressing him, his own brothers, rejecting him, his own family, you know, in that, in that sense, his brothers did not believe in him. So, yeah, and at, up until this point, okay? Interesting verse, Psalm chapter 69. Turn to the Psalms, chapter 69. It is Messianic Psalm about the coming of Messiah. And one of the prophecies related to him is in verse 8. Actually, in the study, we've already looked at verse 9. We refer to that. So here in the Messianic Psalm, the psalmist, through the gift of prophecy, was prophesying related to the life of Jesus and said, I have become a stranger to my brothers and alien to my mother's children. A stranger to my brother. So we have in prophecy fulfillment here where his own brothers were rejecting him. One of the signs, he was Messiah. is found here. And then the next verse we looked at, zeal for your house has eaten me up when Jesus cleared the temple and all of that. So, uh, And there's other prophecies in Psalm 69 too uh, as well related to the Lord Jesus and His death. I thought it was interesting anyway. Messianic Psalm. He would be a stranger to His brothers. His brothers at this point were not His disciples. Mat a matter of fact, they made a point to say, your disciples. And uh, which is in fact saying, you know, those people, you know, those followers, those your disciples, not us, not His own disciples brothers. Think about it. You know, think about that. What did they believe? Did, did, doesn't anybody believe in Jesus? Not the Jews, not the own brothers of Jesus. What about uh, the world? What did Jesus say about this? In John 7, in His response, in Jesus' response to His brother's <coughs> attitude toward Him, He responds to it. In verse uh, 7, My time has not yet come. But your time is always ready. So he brings it back to his brothers, actually. Your time's always ready. My time has not yet come. So he's, in a sense, separating himself from his brothers. And, of course, he's the son of God. They're the sons of Joseph. There's a separation there forever. Forever separation. 
My time has not yet come. Your time is always ready. You can go, you know, you can go up to the feast anytime, anytime. They'll receive you. The world will receive you. He said in verse 7, The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify of it that its works are evil. Now, in, in the passage, Jesus makes clear, you know, what's the attitude of the world toward him? It hates Jesus. It's, and it, it's interesting, this carries on all throughout Christian history because the common attitude of the world toward Jesus is hatred. Okay, we can talk about God, we can talk about Creator or religion, but when we start talking about the person of Christ, that's when there's that clear delineation. Who is on the Lord's side? And the feelings about what it means to be a true believer come out then. So even still today, so Jesus says the attitude of the world, what, did, what was their view? They hated Jesus. And also he explains why the world hates Jesus. And by the way, Christian, it's the same reason the world will hate us when we speak the truth. He says, uh, because, in verse 7, I testify of it that its works are evil. So Jesus would speak the truth and spoke the truth to the world. And because of that, the world's attitude toward the Lord Jesus was hatred. Now, this had come up before in John chapter 3. The same idea. What did they believe? How did they feel toward Him? In John 3, 19. John 3, 19. We covered before, I think. John 3, 19. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Everyone practicing evil hates the light. And does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. Listen, when we come to Christ, his spirit exposes us. This is like first step. His spirit exposes us, reveals sin. Things that are wrong in our life comes to light. Okay? And so that's why repentance is a necessary part of uh, of. Uh, Coming to the Lord. Exposing ourselves to His light. Jesus said the world hates Him because of this. Because He makes clear their deeds are evil. Okay. Next, doesn't anybody believe in Jesus? Not the world, not the Jews, not His brothers. What about the crowd? Back in John 7... Here's the crowd's view of Jesus. Verse 12. John 7, verse 12. They were complaining. There was much complaining among the people concerning Him. He is good, some said. Others said, no. On the contrary, He deceives the people. So they're complaining, kind of arguing about it. But they didn't do this openly because the Jewish people didn't want any... Jesus talk. Period. So they were complaining about it. And also they're confused about who is Jesus. Who is He and what it means uh, to, to know Him. They're confused about it. Some, some say uh, He's good. Others say He's a deceiver. They were confused about it. And all of this in John 7. Interesting. Doesn't anybody believe in Him? What about the people of Jerusalem? Now this kind of jumps down to verse 25. The people of Jerusalem. It says, Some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this not He whom they seek to kill? Now this is the general population talking about the religious leaders. Is He not the one they're seeking to kill? 
So they're watching Jesus closely. Interesting. They're watching him closely. In uh, verse 27, we know that this man is where this man is from. But when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. Okay, so they're watching their leaders closely. They're watching Jesus closely. They claim they know the Scripture. They claim to know the Scripture, but they're missing the truth of it. He would be born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, called a Nazarene. They were missing these truths, important truths about the Lord Jesus because they were blinded. Doesn't anybody believe in Jesus? So the people of Jerusalem observed him. They claimed to know the scriptures. They were watching their influence by their leaders. Uh, doesn't anybody believe? Interesting. 